Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of our Total War Warhammer 2 Lizardmen campaign. We've actually started our final ritual. Somehow we beat Nagaron to the punch, uh, which was amazing. And as a result, we now have like all these Skaven armies running rampant all over our lands. But that's okay, because we're actually sitting in a pretty good spot. Like, all in all, um, we are first in line for the final ritual. Uh, if we can beat up these Skaven, uh, and there are going to be multiple batches of Skaven that spawn, but if we can beat up these Skaven, then, uh, we should be good. Uh, we're going to start moving Mazda Mundi down there. Krokgar's over here. I mean, I don't really care about the Altar of the Horned Rat. The income that it's giving me is negligible. They do have two full armies here. Uh, let's upgrade this Skink Chief to give him... Hmm... Probably precise. I mean, he's on an Ancient Stegodon. Oh, no, he's not. Now he's on an Ancient Stegodon. There we go. So we'll do that. And then I think we're just gonna pull Krotgar out. Like, we'll just get him out of here. He doesn't need to be dealing with any of this. He can come up and help us with uh, our other problems i can just abandon this settlement altogether at this point it's it's not needed because we've got the ritual started so who cares um you garrison in with this army so we have a skink priest in here um why oh because uh i was getting extra recruitment from having mazda mundi in that okay that's fine no big deal um what Okay, this is good. Um, let's actually see if we can kind of speed this up a little bit, this uh, recruitment process, by doing some global recruit stuff as well. So let's do that, and then let's give ourselves, like, two unit Asaurus spears. That'll get us up to basically a full army, at least almost. Um, in fact, we are going to want some dinosaurs. So let's go there and there. So we'll get an Ancient Stegodon and two Carnosaurs for this army. I actually wouldn't mind having a Bastilodon with a Revivification Crystal, but I think... I think this will be fine. This will... I mean, this is this should be able to fend off anything that the... Uh, that the Skaven throw at me for sure. So I think we'll be okay. And then I think we're basically good to end the turn. I don't want to spend any money because it's possible that with the Skaven running rampant all over my lands down here... Uh, that they may end up, um, I may end up going in the negative for upkeep. So I want to kind of save my money if I can. Let's just make sure we've moved all of our generals properly. We have. So let's go ahead and end the turn. And we are, I, honestly, I think we are good to go. I'm, I'm absolutely floored that we beat Nagaron to the, the ritual. Because they had a pretty substantial lead on us as far as uh, ritual resources go. But it, either we caught up or they just didn't uh, they didn't pop the ritual right away. Which is possible. Maybe they had enough ritual resources, but they the AI, for whatever reason, said now is not the right time. And they decided to, uh, you know, leave it be. I don't know. I'm not going to complain about it either way. We have the, the advantage, we have the lead. So we should be able, if we could just hold on for 20 turns and then get Mazda Money to that final battle, we should have another uh, another campaign in the books, which I'm excited about. I just got to fend off some Skaven armies and then we'll be good. Let's get that popped as well. I do wish I could put Krokgar into Mazda Mundi's army <laughs> as like a hero. That would probably be a little bit overpowered, but we'll just auto-resolve because we are going to lose that. I mean, these guys are going to level basically like my entire everything, which is unfortunate, but what can you do? There we go. So let's see. We got two Skaven armies here. Mazda Mundi is over this way. I think I want to put you into Port Reaver. We'll bring you down into the temple. And we'll put Mazda Mundi into the Monument of the Moon, or at least close enough to support it. 
And the Sora Scar Veteran. I'm not really sure what to give him at this point. I guess we'll give him... I mean, the Magic Resistance is... Well, no, you know what? Magic Resistance... A lot of the Skaven artillery units do magic damage. So maybe it would be good to have the uh, that magic resistance there. Also, let's try and upgrade the walls. Uh, let's see. You can come up here and hit this. And we'll win that quite handily. And then I'm going to sack it because that's a lot of money. And unfortunately, you are now out of... Uh, I can't actually get to... Uh, encampment stance to replenish. So let's put me into this territory. I can replenish there. We'll see if these guys come charging at us. Uh, if they do, I may regret having myself in forced march stance, but we'll find out. Um, do 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 this skink chief. What do we want to give him? Probably precise. Boost that weapon damage up. He's on an ancient stegodon, so damage is already pretty significant as it is. If I can boost it up a little higher, I will. And I think I can take on these armies if they all come against me at once. We do have a fair amount of armor piercing between all these ancient stegodons and a guy in a carnosaur and all that kind of stuff, but we'll see. They may just run away. Krokgar. Might as well grab this, because there's no reason not to. That's actually a pretty decent ability. Um, let's bring you up this way. We're going to bring him kind of around and up, I think. Boost that money a little. Do I have any other generals that haven't moved? I do. This guy. Uh, Hexawaddle should be able to defend itself for now, at least. I mean, I've got a Carnosaur, I've got three Croxagores, two Ancient Stegon, like, this is a solid army. That should be able to deal with just about any sort of, uh, intervention army that shows up. So I should be set there. There is this Dark Elf army that's kind of wandering around over here, so I think I'm gonna move this guy down here. And then I think we will end the turn. Lothurn's moving. I still haven't... I don't think... I think we're still waiting on a Dark Elf Intervention Army. Yeah, they can... It, you can have that one, Teclas. It's all yours. Oh, and you only... Uh, you only sacked it. You didn't even... Hmm, okay. Whatever. This is not a province I care about anymore. I have bigger fish to fry, as the saying goes. Okay, military access. You know what? Fine. Take it. Peace treaty. Also fine. I'm totally good with that. One less enemy to worry about. That means... Ooh. I got an underway interception. That's a lot of Plague Monk sensor bearers. And a lot of Skaven artillery. But I do definitely want to do this. I want to under... I, I absolutely want to fight these Skaven. And if we destroy them here, then they are gone, I believe. I think they're completely done. All those Plague Monk sensor bearers are certainly a problem, though. So we're going to have to rely kind of on Mazda Mundi and his magic to get some of that done. I mean, Plague Monk sensor bearers are pretty lightly armored. So my Chameleon Skink should be able to do some work. But we want to keep them away from our dinosaurs because they are armor piercing and they do some pretty nasty stuff. Uh, I'm good with this. I don't know... Well, no, they're going to have the ranged advantage. They're going to come charging straight... They, they're not going to come charging straight at me. They're probably going to sit back and camp with their artillery. So let's kind of spread our armies out a little bit. Um, we do have our Plague Monks up here. Or not our Plague Monks, our Chameleon Skinks. So I'm just going to put them up here. And I'm going to have them probably like immediately fall... Well, actually, I can even see... Yeah, look at them camp back here. Just chill. We're just gonna chill back here and, and camp out. Jerks. That's all right. We'll put our chameleon skinks up here. They'll be invisible for now. Uh, and then we need to get 
all of our other stuff in here. So we have got a Carnosaur here, Carnosaur there, Bastilodon, Mazdamundi, General, Ancient Stay. We have so many dinosaurs in this army. And what are you? A Blessed Temple Guard. Okay. So you should really be over here with these guys. Let's just do something like that. Spread these guys out a little bit more because we're, we're hoping to take the charge with our Saurus Warriors. We'll do this and hard group so that formation stays together. And then let's start the battle and just pause for a sec. I don't know what the range... Yeah, their artillery is in range of my Chameleon Skinks, but that's about it. Their artillery only reaches to over here. So we should be able to move these guys up to, say, like, right about here fairly safely. And I'm just going to leave my Chameleon Skinks right here for now. So let's let's do that, and let's uh, walk these guys so they don't take as much... Uh, uh, they don't get tired. We're not in a hurry. They're just going to camp back here, and none of my guys are in range. Like, my, my Chameleon Skinks are in range, but they don't realize that my Chameleon Skinks are in range. So uh, they got a Plague Claw Catapult. They got a Warp Lightning Cannon. Some Rat Ogres. I mean, really, the Plague Claw Catapult is the only thing here that I'm particularly scared of, other than the Plague Monk Sensor Bearers. And these guys have 20 armor. They do have physical resistance of 30%, so they are a bit tougher than it appears on paper. But they have basically no armor. Um, then they got Death Globe Bombardiers that are anti-infantry. I do have a Doom Wheel as well. Okay, let's just see. Where's my army... Eh, they're getting there. They're almost there. They don't. They man, they did not really manage to stay in formation, but they kind of did. Okay, so let's start moving these guys up a little bit. I kind of spread them out just a bit. They're they're still not visible. Uh, actually, they I think they had death runners and stuff as well. So they've got some units in here that are probably. Um, invisible to me. Okay, let's move these guys up a little bit more. Let's move them up to, like, right here. There we go. And then we'll move them up. Uh, not right there. Move them up to right here. Alright, let's get these guys kind of moving up a little. I want to get some shots in on some of these guys. Ah, yeah, they can see me now. They missed. Shoot at the rat, shoot at the rat ogres. There we go. All right. And then they just start falling back. Eh, we did okay. Let's start kind of pulling them over here. Those plague claw catapults are going to start firing again pretty soon. To move these guys up. We're just trying to harass a little bit while these, uh, while my formation kind of gets into position. Yeah, there we go. Now they're shooting. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Pause. I must have misclicked something because they're not firing. Come on, guys. Fall back. Don't let those plague monks catch you. Yeah, look at the damage to those plague monk sensor bearers. Which, and that's not insignificant. These are very expensive units. Like, okay, ungroup, pause for a sec. Uh, you know what? We'll just go slow motion. Okay, group these guys up, charge. Uh, group these guys up, charge. Let's get this Carnosaur kind of coming over here. This Carnosaur get on the Doom Wheel. Ancient Stegodon on the Doom Wheel. You need to get into these Plague Monk Sensor Bearers for sure. Get the Saurus Scar Veteran headed that way. Mazda Mundi. Pause for a sec. Runation of Cities right there. 
And actually, a net of Amontok as well would be great. Can we get it off in time? There we go. We've netted a whole bunch of this stuff. Let's get this. I want to take out those uh, that artillery. Let's get these guys up here and into combat. Get my chameleon skinks around this way. There we go, Mazdamundi. I got a nice blob of sensor bearers right here, so let's drop a Comet of Cassidora on them. You shouldn't need the extra armor piercing from overcasting it. And... Yeah, that did some work. Okay. Mazdamundi, get on these uh, Poison Wind Globadiers. Okay, there we go. This Carnosaur is rampaging, unfortunately. Actually, we got it. Look at this blob over here. Pause for a minute. Um, what have I got? Arcane on Forging, Net of Amontok. I mean, the only direct damage spell I have, really. Let's let's do this, I guess, and just hope that that does... Actually, no, no, no. Give me a Banishment right there. That's a beautiful blob. Okay, all my Chameleon Skinks. That's three. Where's my other one? There it is. Bring them over here. Start shooting into... I mean, their Plague Monk Sensor Bearers are just falling apart right now. Which is exactly what we want. Their artillery is also falling apart. Shoot these Rat Ogres. Okay, so all we have left is this little bit over here. Give me a Comet of Cassidora right there. This is kind of their only, like, real pocket that's left. Um, so our Scar Veteran, you're probably, to get, you're probably fine to get off this artillery at this point. Shoot those Gutter Runners. You get on these Poison Wind Globadiers. We still have this Doom Wheel to deal with. Uh, let's get both of my Carnosaurs on the Doom Wheel, if we can. These Globadiers do have a lot of armor, so it would be great if we could get an armor piercing unit on them. Like this Ancient Stegodon, for example. Yep, there we go. That's doing some very good work. A lot of these guys are routing. Okay, so now... They're, they've all broken. Um, pause for a minute. I want to kind of group everybody up. Because Mazda Mundi has this apotheosis ability. Which will heal units. So I want to kind of be healing some of this stuff. I also want to be healing up uh, some of these other units as well. Let's heal... Uh, Temple Guards first, I think, over Saurus Warriors. We want to basically heal up using Apotheosis as much as possible. There we go. Heal these guys. Does that resurrect dead units? No, it does not. Still, though. Heal as much as we can. What's this do? Nothing important. Okay. Heal the Carnosaur. We'll let a lot of these... I mean, these guys are just going to run away, which is fine. I do also have uh, this lovely Arcane Conduit ability over here. I'm just going to... It's, it's not a huge heal, but it's a little bit. And there's a good chance that another Skaven army is going to pop up fairly soon. So every little bit could potentially matter. So it might not be the most exciting thing in the world, but I'm going to take advantage of it at least until I run, to, uh, run completely out of Winds of Magic. Do whatever we can here. Heal up the Temple Guard. I mean, really, it's just a matter of Trying to get these guys back. Um, I do have Arcane Conduit again. There we go. Let's drop that on this one right here. Uh, 
And I can probably, I'll do it like one more time. There we go. Let's uh, go on these guys. They can still be healed up a little bit. All right, there we go. I think we'll end the battle right there. So decisive victory. One Skaven army down. Mazdamundi's army didn't take too much damage. Probably should have just kept healing the Carnosaur, honestly. But that's, it's all good. And then we definitely want the replenishment. Because that basically brings Mazdamundi's army back to full strength. We're still going to have to fight off all of this stuff, but that's all right. We got a Dark Elf Intervention army here that we should be able to just crush. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Look at them run. So they're in nasty shape now. But unfortunately, that did kind of cut into my ability to recruit anything over here, which is a little annoying. So until this Dark Elf Intervention army is gone, there's really not a whole lot of point in recruiting more stuff. Um, you come on out and... Ooh. Really? I don't think they have the advantage like you seem to think. You are you are overvaluing those doom wheels that they have, I think. It's all right. We'll go Honored Elder. Mazdamundi. Ooh, I can hit these guys. So that is exactly what we're going to do. We've got... Yeah, really? I don't think... Seems to think we're going to lose this battle. I don't don't see it. We got a lot of dinosaurs. We got a lot of carnosaurs. We got reinforcements. We could lightning strike it. <laughs> and that gives us a huge advantage. So actually, let's do that. I did lose a unit of Saurus Warriors, apparently. But we did get a victory. And then we can beat them. And that is two more Skaven dealt with. And now I need to get back over here, and I need more Saurus Warriors for sure. So let's try to do that. We'll try to get some via the recruitment, uh, the global recruit. I don't know if it'll work. But nonetheless, I'm good with at least, uh, we'll, we'll try. Uh, okay. I guess we'll go Indomitable because there's nothing else really here that I need to spend money on, so. Um, and there's no, there's no actual like recruitment anything here. What's left? One, two, three, four Skaven armies it looks like. Okay. Tell you what, let's bring you to right here. And then we'll do that. And there we go. That wipes those guys out. So that leaves three Skaven armies. Now you get to go back into Port Reaver. You get to come back here to this temple. I'm almost tempted to attack. But I think we come back to the temple right here. And chill out for a minute. All right. So he has two skill points to spend. He can't get a Carnosaur yet. We could go with... We should probably go with one of the Blessings. Minus 20 upkeep for Saurus Warriors and Temple Guard. Hit points. I really think we should probably go with the one that gives us Casualty Replenishment, even though it's boring. So that's what we'll do, and then we'll also go stand your ground. And then you need another unit of Saurus Warriors. Now the downside is we're probably not going to be able to actually recruit any of that stuff because this intervention army is probably going to siege Hexawaddle again. Um, although maybe I can bring this guy over and maybe he won't, but I'm not, uh, I don't think that's super likely. Okay. Krotgar is over here. We'll bring him... Mm, we'll bring him this way. There we go. 
Anyone else that hasn't moved? Ah, Gortehe. Yes, yes, yes. I don't think they really... I don't think there's anything left over here that I'm actually at war with. <laughs> so, uh, we're just going to grab you and pull you back this way. Because I'm not actually at war with any of that stuff at this point. This is all doing well. We can get a little bit more income there. A little bit more income here. We can upgrade that. Which one are you? Ah, uh, this one. I mean, we might as well attempt <laughs> to recruit these Saurus Warriors and the Ancient Stegonon and the two Feral Carnosaurs, but I don't think it's going to work. I don't th uh, This guy's probably going to come here. He's going to attack Hexawaddle and it's going to block all my stuff. And then he's going to lose, but that's how the AI does stuff. So, what other settlements can I upgrade? I could upgrade Chotek. And at this point, I think that's probably worth it. I'd love to get walls on that. We have more settlement upgrades available. We'll end the turn. That was a productive turn for getting rid of Skaven armies. I think they have three armies left. And I don't know if one of my armies could take on all three, but one for one, one of my armies can definitely beat a Skaven army of just about any type. At least my decent armies, the ones that actually have like the big dinosaurs and stuff like that in there. There's a lot of really tough stuff in amongst. Yep, deep. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. That's all right. So no recruitment, no global recruitment, none of that. But so be it. I think the worst thing is that uh, Mazdamundi's army is missing like three Saurus warriors, but that's okay. All right, so untainted recruitment cross. Uh, ooh, we'll do this. I hate to I hate the chaos corruption, but an extra unit level for every recruit is pretty tough. Oh wait, Mazdamundi did actually get the uh, the global recruitment, so let's get rid of this guy, finish them off, get lost. That's the end of him. We need to go back here, and once again, two feral carnosaurs and an ancient stegodon, please. And then give me four Temple Guard. And we'll go two more Saurus Warriors with shields over here. And that'll be this army. So we'll have this entire army, actually. Let's get our Saurus Warriors from there instead. Probably a little bit smarter. They want to keep sending guys over this way? Fine by me. If they want to go that route. Skink Priest. Uh, what level do you have to be to get a Stegodon? 15? Let's actually go scouting. There goes that army. Again, I'll take the replenishment. We'll move you back here. And once again. Uh... Another Sora Spear. And then you get to come back here. We'll see if this Skaven army does the exact same thing, where they come running up that way. If they want to, I'm totally okay with that. That's their own stupidity. They don't learn. That's not my fault. Go gives the jungle for replenishment. You, Arcane Conduit, for sure. Honored Elder. Swing down here and hit these guys. I've got enough of an advantage where I'm okay with doing that. Oh, they actually ran a little bit farther. That's fine. Uh, give me another Saurus warrior, please. So this army is beat up pretty bad. We should be fine. They should be pretty much crippled at this point. You're probably good where you're at. 
These armies are doing great as far as public order and everything goes. We don't really have any enemies over here at all. Uh, let's look at this. Was there a rare resource here? Farms. Don't really care about farms, honestly, but I will do geomantic sustenance and that. Uh, we will also upgrade probably this one just because it's the... Actually, we can do both of these. Even better. How's our public order doing over here? It's good, and it's good. So actually, our public order is great all around. So this is this is lovely. Um, definitely want to upgrade that. Definitely want this, and... What else do I want over here? Probably, I mean, I could go a star chamber, but post battle loot, income from all buildings. Hmm. I mean, our public order is, is solid, so I'm not really concerned with that either. I don't really have any enemies down there. Like, there's, there's not really a whole lot of purpose in doing some of that stuff. Uh, okay. This guy. We've got Stand Your Ground. I think we probably want to go... Fervent. Krokdar has a Skink Priest that has leveled up as well. Let's give him Gutter Fighter. And then Kro or you get to come over this way. I'm probably not going to try and take these back. I will upgrade that, though. And this. And that. More income, the merrier. And we've got some research available. Oh, because we got this, uh, ah, that's pretty sweet. Okay, melee attack for temple guards. Let's see here. So what would be the most beneficial for us? I can't believe that we still haven't done this. Construction cross, growth. I mean, this is part of the reason that we've had income problems is that we haven't really focused on a lot of these uh, income technologies. But at this point, I think it's a little too late. So let's just go here for a uh, boost to our temple guard. And I think you can probably come back, honestly. And you can just come home. I don't think you're really needed over there anymore. We can kind of consolidate all of our armies to uh, protect everything. Um, and all of the intervention armies have been fought off. So basically we've got this Skaven army and this Skaven army, and that is pretty much it. Uh, and this settlement, whatever, don't care. All right. Ooh. We're going to get another wave of Skaven. We know that for sure. So we'll probably want to position some armies down on that lower half of the continent, because I'm assuming that's where the second wave of them is going to come from. But assuming we can stomp them out fairly easily, should be set. Ah, Nagaron finally started their ritual. But they're like five turns behind me at this point. Military alliance? Sure. You know what? Why not? You're already at war with all the people. I don't see why not. Take a military alliance. I actually wouldn't mind a military alliance with the uh, Tlaxtlan. Because if the Skaven armies are down there... Although I don't think the unknown Skaven clans actually go to war against the other settlements. I think they only are at war with, uh, with me. Okay, you... Let's wipe these guys out. Goodbye. There we go. And we get to play this game again. They just don't learn. Stupid Skaven. Goodbye. Didn't even lose any guys that time. 
So there goes the unknown Skaven. That is all the Skaven armies taken care of. Um, I think next for the Saurus Gar veteran, let's go speed. He's already on a Carnosaur, which is a very fast uh, mount, obviously. So we can boost that up even higher. Hey, that's good with me. Um, you could start moving down this way. I do want to resettle some of these. Well, we have a little bit of a reprieve here. Uh, you are still recruiting, which is fine. Let's put you up here at Chotex Causeway. We know we're going to get a second wave at five, uh, at, uh, with ten turns remaining. So, what we should probably do is kind of try and get our armies into position to deal with that. So, let's bring you down here. Try to garrison you right there. Or put you right there, I should say. This is all good. What are the three we need to protect? Skeggy, Hexawaddle, and the Mirror Pool. Okay. So that's all good. You get to come into the water. Over here. There we go. And our priest leveled up as well. Very nice. Uh, let's go. Missile resistance. And end the turn. And now we get to see exactly how this will all play out. Knights of the Flame, Spinosotech Dwarves, all sorts of good stuff. They're trespassing. What a bunch of jerks. That's all right. Kill or wound? Oh, dude, that's not even worth it. And they, they're coming after the Star Tower? Um, I have no chance of winning that battle, so I'm just going to decline. I mean, they can have the Star Tower back. Like, it's... Oh, actually, that's part of this province, though. Eh, you know what? They can have it. I don't care. I don't care that much, anyway. All right, you come down here. Recolonize this. Upgrade. You can't actually reach anything. Krotgar. Recolonize this. You start marching over here. Mazdamundi, you get to come up towards Hexawaddle. You've got two more turns left until you are fully... Re uh, built up as an army or whatever. And then we'll put him in Skeggy. Rebuild that. I wonder if I could get him over to the Star Tower fast enough. Probably not. But I'm certainly willing to try. Because <laughs> if I could get him over here, then we could probably take this. How many turns they got? Ten turns until that uh, siege? Hmm. We'll see. Might be worth doing. Let's check on some of this stuff. Let's check our buildings. Might as well upgrade that. Basically, anything that's not an income building or a defensive building. Like, I'm just not... I don't care. Uh, that one's not even needed. That's in a, an area that's not really threatened. Um, that one we will upgrade... That we will upgrade for sure. And that one I don't care about. And we have a skink priest here who is level 10. Uh, let's buff up Windblast. And end the turn. 
Lothurn has now started their ritual as well. There's no point in even sending intervention armies because I'm ahead of them by several turns. And I don't think they can send another intervention army against me. Or against uh, the Dark Elves or anything like that. Like, I think they only get the one. Sure. I accept your military access. And now we go through all the various chaos armies and stuff. Okay, there we go. Do do do. So you have a Sora Scar veteran who is basically maxed out. So at this point, what do you give him? I think you give him assault units. Cause why not? And then we put Mazdamundi in Hexawaddle. You've got one more turn, and then you can be done. Uh, recruiting, and you can go around and do other more important things. Uh, the ancient one, the plaques? I don't really need the plaques, honestly. Um, what would be great is if I could actually get walls here. Like, early walls would be lovely. You got three turns. Uh, I don't think... Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to actually get these built back up, but we're going to try. Why would you go around the long way? That seems very silly to me. That's all right. Crocar can chill over here. We'll see where these we'll see where the enemies spawn. They very well may spawn in the same spot or they may spawn far, far away. It's hard to say for sure. Uh, let's see. Star Tower's right there, so we want to get over here as quickly as possible. The downside is we're going to take some attrition as we do it, which kind of stinks, but not much I can do about it, unfortunately. Uh, income. We need that army to replenish. We need Krotgar's army to replenish. Honestly, though, I might want to swap out Give the Sora Scar veteran. I might want to swap out one of these Skink Chiefs. Like this Skink Priest, put that into Krokgar's army, and Krokgar's army will be utterly unstoppable. Not that it really isn't already. <laughs> Can I get... No, I can't. I think we probably just leave it the way it is. I think it's fine. Yeah, let's end the turn. <clears throat> so in like three more turns, we're going to have another big wave of stuff. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Wasn't able to get my army there fast enough. We lost the star tower. That stinks, but it's okay. That is a pretty substantial hit resource wise, though, I believe, because that was an elven port. So that's probably going to cut into our income pretty significantly, which kind of stinks, but what can you do? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Our income is down to two th negative 2,000 income right now. This is why we wanted a buffer. So you need to stay out of the range of these guys. Because at sea, I have no actual tactical control over anything. That stinks, though, that they took the Star Tower back. My income is just tanked. Let's see. So 2,000... If I'm losing 2,000 a turn... And I don't actually buy anything. That means I would have 19 turns... Honestly, that might be fine. I'm just kind of thinking about it. That would probably be okay. Um, let's go Skirmisher. I want to get these 
chameleon skinks buffed up a little bit as well. And then we want this army to come over here and chill in Skeggy. So I'm going to be running at a deficit income-wise, but honestly, I think I'm okay with that. Because we're also going to get income back for winning the battles. We'll get post-battle loot, which is, you know, fairly good. Um, let's go Curse of the Midnight Wind. I mean, I could colonize this, but at this point... At this point, I don't think it's worth it. And I think you don't really... Maybe you just do income building. Like, it'll cost us a little bit, but it'll kind of cut into this deficit. Every little bit counts right now. I wonder if I can get any trade agreements that I don't already have. Doesn't really look like it. Yeah, they're not interested. And they're not interested. I didn't think so, but it was worth checking. Um, you guys, would you be interested? Oh, dude, they will join a confederation. So, actually, we will totally do that. And now our income has tanked even more, because of course it has. Because pro Probably because they have a whole bunch of armies around. Yeah, like this one, that's got to go. That army needs to go. That's actually one of mine. Okay, so... Now, why are we at less income if I have already disbanded all of their armies? I have to be missing an army somewhere. But that's one of mine. From the loss of the trade agreement, did they did we not get like anything income wise from those guys? It appears that we really didn't. Like, how in the world did our income drop after confederating? I mean, the trade agreement was certainly worth something, but I guess that's what it was. I guess we just lost all the trade income that we had from trading with them. But now we can trade with Itza. And that'll basically get us back to roughly where we were. And we do have some good stuff over here, so... Income from post-battle loot faction-wide, that's pretty good. Um, let's see if... I wonder if the... Oh, no, they, they will not agree to a peace treaty. Okay, well, so much for that. Still, I now have a lot more land than I did before. Uh, do we have any rights that would potentially help us out? The right of ferocity, maybe. I mean... Income from post-battle loot would be useful, because it's more income, and we are running at a, at a deficit, as I said before. But I think it's about that time. Like, we're, we're getting pretty close. So we're going to kind of garrison some of these guys in various spots. We'll, we'll sort of put them around. I'm assuming the Skaven are going to spawn, like, in here somewhere. And I can live with that. But we'll have... We have a full stack army in each of the three settlements we need to defend. We only need to hold on for 12 more turns. Krokgar is fine. And down here to help out. We do have some commandments available to us now that we didn't have before, which is good. Uh, I can't afford to upgrade the temple because I need the money that we have. Let's end the turn. See what Lothurn does. Not a whole lot. Nagarond also doesn't look like they're actually attacking me at all. Do 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 do.
Nagaron's getting hit by Chaos Armies, though. You can see that over there. Or not Nagaron, uh, Lothurn is. Vampire Corruption, Charge Bonus, and Speed. Um... Honestly, how long will this last for? Six turns? We're gonna do it. We can use the extra stuff, I think. So, at the start of next turn, there should be some Skaven armies that are gonna spawn. So what I want to do is kind of put these guys around in various positions and put them into ambush stance and hopefully catch some of these Skaven by surprise with uh, some ambush stuff. That's what I'm going to hope for. It may work. It may not work. Krogar, I'm going to put him right here next to Phloxalon. Mazdamundi is fine where he's at. You need to... Ludicrous. Oof. Those armies. Okay. You need to stay out of their range. I need to be out of their movement range. The Blood Swamps is probably going to get hit next, but I'll be able to bring him over to assist. You're good. You're good. And we can't afford to buy, like, any upgrades. So, uh, although we can afford income just to oh i'm actually positive income now how'd that happen i don't know how i got positive income but hey whatever i'm not gonna complain about it somehow i ended up back in positive income hmm. cool fine by me build that uh i don't think that's worth it for the extra 90 gold it won't pay for itself in time you on the other hand are worth doing that would be 7,200. Probably Elsa not going to pay for itself in time. And also not going to pay for itself in time. You will pay for yourself in time. Okay. It's about to get crazy. About to have hordes of uh, Skaven spawning everywhere, presumably. I think that's at turn 10. Or at least when you have 10 turns left in your ritual. There we go. Yeah, he's going to come down here and hit this because of course he is. He'll probably take it. Yeah, I'll settle it. Jerk. The Order of Lore Masters has become kind of a thorn in my side, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But I have other things I need to worry about. But I can't really focus a whole lot on beating up on them. We're in the kind of final push here, or at least we're about to start the final push. The final piece of the puzzle. A relic to turn the cogs of the world and bring alignment lay beyond the great falls of Azteco. A key would be discovered, one to unlock knowledge both welcome and unwanted. The fabric of reality was torn. From the realm of ruin, the Skaven's horned god mocked its prey and revealed his plan. The celestial event that weakened the Vortex was of Skaven design, a parody of the true comet. The Council of Thirteen, the Rat Men's highest authority, were architects of this grand manipulation. Its task complete and fuel expended, 
the rocket fell back to the surface. When the wreckage was discovered, its purpose remained unclear until now. It was the catalyst to weaken the Vortex and goad the other races into action. They knew the reptiles would seek to bolster the failing Vortex, but they were ready. Every ritual cast, the magic was stolen, absorbed into the horned rat's bell. Now soaked in ritual power, the bell will be moved to Earthwan's heart. If it tolls 13 times, the horned god shall emerge from the vortex, the world doomed. Then the god was gone. Alignment is close. But Sotek's nemesis may yet bring ruin upon us all. And there we go. The insidious Skaven seek to bring their terrible god into this world, mighty lord. This must... Capture 300 battle captives, blessed Soros warriors with shields. That's actually uh, pretty doable. Let's see, where they spawn? Oh, look at this. They all spawned right over here. This is actually really good for us. Um, yeah, they're all over the place. Now, I don't know if Krotgar and company will be able to take all of this right here. But we can try. And we can, we can put a pretty significant dent into a lot of these guys. So... What I'm thinking is we need earthing. As Mundy's up here. You are, of course, right in the middle of a storm. Naturally. That's like, where else would you want to be right now? Well, let's just be in the middle of a storm. Cool. We'll go precise. Buff up his ancient Stegadon weapon damage even further. Uh, I'm going to swing over here, put you into the blood swamps where you belong. You're fine where you're at. I don't think we can get any more intervention armies. Like, I don't think they, I don't think it's possible. But there's all this stuff to deal with. And I think that means that this is a perfect time to end off today's episode. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Links in the description below, so check those out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.